Oh. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I surprised you. I turn on the recorder and you know we're starting the show now. Yeah. We're getting the vibe. Friends from out of town. It's time to stop yapping and get moving. So we'll do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, you want to welcome all our guests, right? Your radio show. Ah, okay. Thank you for being here, Scott, and welcome everybody to Awaken Hidden Truth. Scott, more, more and more viewers, they are happy, you know, with our show because they feel like very uplifting, you know. Well, that's and it. There's no negative in it at all. I don't deal with positive and negative streams mm -hmm. of energy, psychically or any other way. I work with an energy that's behind all that and from way beyond it, beyond the void. Um, I always say this that most Buddhist monks know. They think it's the final place. I don't do that to be insulting to Buddhist monks. I do it because they understand that there's a void at the top of these four lower dimensions, then they think that's it. They know the structure of the four lower planes, most Buddhists, but they don't know what's above that void because they've never been taught that they can imagine their way or go into the higher worlds above there. And they all originated from there as Atmos, like we all did. Freedom as a being and true free will begins to awaken in a person when they begin to journey across that void. That's a pretty big statement. I don't suspect that a lot of your viewers or listeners will understand what I'm talking about, so I'll lay it out like a map. Because once they hear it, they may begin to, it may sound familiar to them, begin to remember something. The physical world they live on on Earth is part of the physical reality, which is nuclear. It's made of atoms and electrons and protons and all that, as everybody knows. There's an energy behind the physical universe in dark matter in space, between stars, between planets, between galaxies. All that black void is not black at all. In fact, it's brilliant light. But physical eyes can't see it, so it looks dark to them. When you're out of your body in the true form of being that runs physical bodies, the atma, which is spherical-shaped energy, it can see this light in this immense void blackness in all of creation as a bright light with a gold tinge running through everything. Now, there are instruments on Earth that can detect ultraviolet, infrared, and x-rays, and all these other things. They actually have physical light and sound to them. And you have to get above the physical consciousness and physical body in order to see them and understand them. The brain of a human being on Earth is not capable of comprehending or understanding the multiverse, the multidimensional creation. The being that runs a body on Earth and has forgotten they are a being running a body can understand, all, it can, it does, it's able to understand all that. The IQ goes way beyond anything measurable upon Earth as soon as they get out of their body, and everybody does it every night. Like experts, like pros. But they've been manipulated and subconsciously, they've got programs running in their subconscious that misdirects them to understand and know this anymore. Because they've been uh, encouraged to create with their imagination, good and bad. Positive and negative, wonderful life for themselves and family, terrible fear of the future and Armageddon for the planet. Those are in conflict. And they come out of most people all day long, every day, while they're on this earth, before they go to sleep at night. The only time that shuts down is when they leave their body at night, and the body is put in the trance state called sleep. The trance state called sleep. It means the body is in a trance. That means nobody's home running it, but it's being put on automatic to breathe, heart work, blood circulate, and you go. it goes into this unconscious state because no one's home. That's when the body's recharged, but it's the being coming back to that body in the morning. Sometimes bring back a dream, or maybe they'll remember flying in the astral plane, being free to fly in a physical body. Or maybe they'll remember being on another planet or aboard a spaceship or in another life a billion years ago in another galaxy or in the past of Earth, in Lemuria. 
And when they remember such things, they're actually bringing back awareness of what they once did to this physical life for a reason. Anybody remembering a higher constructive lifetime out in the multidimensional creation is bringing wisdom back to this earth to help get things right this time. The problem is people that are made to incarnate on earth are suppressed from knowing what they did know and what they once could do before they were born here. That's a problem. Because people can't get right in any lifetime anything without making a lot more mistakes in judgment when they can't remember all that goes behind them in eternity, where they've been, what they've done. They're left with almost nothing. So they turn to faith. They listen to people telling them from outside what truth is, what to believe in. But it's not based on any provable facts or experience, even of the people that, that state that this is true when they say something you should believe on faith. Fact is, the only way anybody ever gets free is when they know something themselves about who they are as a being, not a body, and what their co-creative relationship is with the source, the supreme being. They all talk about on earth but know nothing about. They think they're supposed to worship that thing. That's most people. That's incorrect. Completely incorrect. The real source behind our life never requested or insisted or encouraged that we worship it in the first place. There's only one thing that emanates from the source behind all life that runs through the dark matter, which is really bright light in the void of space and supports everything. And it's not positive and negative. And there's only one thing that it encourages people to do when they wake up enough. And that is to respect that source from whence we come as the being, as the Atma and all life. To be free, you have to respect all life everywhere, not just on earth, the whole multidimensional creation. And to do that, you have to be aware of the whole multidimensional creation, or you can't respect it. So there is a law that exists in the upper worlds above the void. And it basically goes like this, love and do as you will. It doesn't mean love in the idea of what people think of love on earth, which is selfish and possessive most often. It means respect all life. People talk about divine love, but they don't understand what it is. It's really respecting all life. And to do that, to be a co-creator with the source, which is the real destiny of all human beings, they have to be able to understand what the multidimensional creation is, what it's like, and all the life in it. To respect it, or you can't. Tyrants also know that if they can keep you from knowing that, they can manipulate you and control you. Not just on earth, but anywhere. So in my work, the endeavor and the only reason for its existence, why it came to this planet for a time, has to help change it in a new direction that has never happened in hundreds of billions of years. And that's changing other things as well out in the universe. Tyrant space-faring races have been withdrawn from this planet and sent home. So they can't influence things or leaders here against their will. They've already programmed people here against their will to be negative in thinking and imagination. So that has to be undone. It's not a problem of tyrants being on this earth from other planets. That problem's been solved. It's a problem of undoing the conditioning that people have been put through here without their consent or awareness. That's still destructive in nature. So with that out of the way, okay, physical universe made of matter, electrons, protons, and all that people are taught in science. There are 144 parallel dimensions. It's a number that is specific in the physical universe. And each one is a different, for instance, planet Earth, another planet Earth, another planet Earth, all a little different in higher frequencies, different time rates. Molecular time rates, the same in one plane, different in another, different in another. And then you get to this barrier between two major divisions, physical and astral. 
then there's an, an astral level with 144 dimensions in it, and it's not made of matter from physical worlds, it's made of matter from astral worlds. And it's higher frequency stuff. The positive and negative, good and bad, still flows through it. Then you get up to the causal level, and there's 144 parallel dimensions there. And the positive and negative flows through it. There's just less negative mixed with it. You get up into the mental level, which is where all thought and intelligence and mind comes from. It's a device, an apparatus the Atma uses. The Atma can know things and move around the universe without a mind or an emotional body. It is not either of those. All emotion comes from the astral plane. Matter is moved there through emotion. In the causal, through causation. In the mental, through thought. In the etheric, which is the upper level of the mental, it's moved through what you would call closer to the atma running things. Very little negativity mix there. So the bodies are more translucent, transparent, made of finer energy. They're still not free. There's still a positive and negative stream running through there. You come to this void. It seems like nothing. There's actually beings and life in the void, but you will never see it unless you're conscious enough to imagine it. Then there's the upper worlds, which are not made of or comprised of anything positive and negative. It's one whole energy called pure positive, and it runs through all the higher worlds to the source itself. There is no negative emotion or imagination of any kind or thought in the Atma level, the first plane above the void. The plane of the Atma, a place of demarcation from the higher worlds to go into incarnations in the lower worlds. And above that, it gets even more strange and so different from life on Earth. There's nothing negative up there. So people go, how come there's evil? Well, if you take all the bodies away from people and have them just be the Atma, they're floating above the void in a place without time and space, beyond time and space. And they know things. And from there, you can look down into the lower dimensions and understand how that works. And then you can bring that understanding back into the planes and re-educate the bodies you have on these different planes, including the physical one, get the nervous system adjusted to handle higher faculties of the Atma in some place like Earth. And your intelligence goes way up. Your understanding, your ability to comprehend things goes way up. Scott, I got questions, you know, from, from my viewer asking, like, we have 144 parallel world, right? Talking about physical plane. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question is, like, we as a physical body, we are living in every no. single, every no. dimension. Every no. You couldn't mm -hmm. handle that. If you have a body here on Earth, and you're living on the third parallel dimension, well, actually, yeah, kind of, two, three, I'm not sure, two, three. And then if you go to a, a place where we often go in our journeys, an Earth that exists right in the same space in a higher molecular time rate, where Lemuria still exists in Atlantis, they're not negative. They're protected, and teachers, master teachers from around the universe, People from the Galactic Alliance come there. They can come from there into our world, keep it from being destroyed, and not even be seen and go back without trying to interfere but help people to become awake enough to create a different direction for the, this world. Because the people on planet Earth come from all over the universe, and they've been made to forget all of it, thrown together. It's really a wonder this place hasn't been gone up in smoke a long time ago. If these beings had not been here, from all over the universe, they're not tyrants. They allowed, they, they didn't interfere when there were two nuclear bombs dropped on people in Japan. But after that, they most certainly did. And all that was stopped. There's a lot of nuclear and hydrogen bomb testing that went on after that, during the Cold War with the former Soviet Union. And then they all woke up and realized they're gonna kill all life on this planet just setting off test bombs. So there was banned worldwide from testing in the atmosphere. They didn't do that on their own. So Scott, when we leave this body, I mean, when we die from this body, 
So next slide, we can choose in this parallel world. If it is for the great good, uplifting benefit of all life, yes. Mm. Otherwise, no. What does that mean? It means if you are really awake as what you are as an atma, spherical energy, white core, different layers, teared up shapes, different colors like a large, like the light that streams out of a spectrum with light passing through it, and kind of a golden energy around it. That's what a human being really looks like. It doesn't look like this. That's all. They got that all wrong on Earth. It's not like this at all. This is just matter, genetics. It took hundreds of millions of years for very higher beings to create body forms like this, and they didn't originate on Earth in this form. To, so that beings could run bodies made of matter of those planes they don't come from, and they could kind of run a body there and have perceptions and awareness and co-create in that dimension. They were never meant to be stuck in a body suffering from the illusion that they're a physical body, which most people on Earth are suffering from that. Anyone on Earth who looks in the mirror and thinks they're a physical body is suffering from primary implant, uh, a very negative, artificially created, terrorizing program implanted in the artificially created subconscious mind. Normal human beings in other worlds and other realities don't have subconscious minds at all. If it's subconscious, you're not aware of what's being put in it and who's doing it. That's why it's called subconscious. People on earth that are trained in schools as doctors don't understand the first thing about what the mind is because it's not in the brain. It's not in the human body at all. How are they going to heal or cure anybody if they don't understand that? So what do they do? They give them drugs, suppressive drugs that suppress symptoms with side effects and usually addictive. And that's, that's well, they know. They get lucky sometimes. I think reverse hypnosis and regression therapy done by really, really ethical beings who have had experiences of being abducted and have passed through that hourglass or who have had and do have experiences of leaving their body and are conscious could help some people recover what they used to know before they were forced to be born on this planet. But you really have to hunt for them. There are few and far between on this planet that can do that. It's really better if people use certain tools I share with them that I didn't create, that don't come from this planet, didn't originate here, that can help them with beings who are very highly trained and don't have subconscious minds to help them start to recover what they were made to affect, to undo this implant subconscious programming, which was done to people before they were forced to incarnate here. It wasn't done on earth. So how are you going to undo it on earth? So people really have the ability to get out of their body. Here's the thing. They do it every night, every single night. But they've been brought up in a culture that suppresses and is terrified of anything beyond Earth or getting out of their body. They think the devil will get them. That's funny, hysterically ridiculous, because they don't realize they don't have any memory. They're on Earth. They don't know where they came from. I came from God. What's that? Oh, I have a mission. I was given a contract with my parents. Oh, I'm on Earth. I, 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 I will die and go to some kind of heaven but they don't remember who or what they were before they were born here. How can you make proper decisions spiritually to progress having all that cut off? It makes no sense, does it? It can, and it doesn't. It's not normal for people on earth to not remember who and what they are that isn't this. They think it is, but it isn't. They don't remember the history they had before they found themselves being born here. Where is that history? 
They just justify it by thinking, well, this is my first and only life. When I'm done, I'm going to heaven. Somebody just made that up, usually a tyrant king on this planet, controlling priests who would be killed if they didn't do what that tyrant king told them to do. That's the history of royal families on this planet. You didn't do what they said. I can only share the truth with people. They think they could get caught by some evil thing if they leave their body, which is hypocritical because they're leaving their body every night anyway. But mm -hmm. they don't remember that's what they're doing in the morning, do they? They think they're going to be caught. And some priests will tell them that to just get money in a church or in a synagogue or something else. It's not honest. Because they don't realize they've already been caught. If you're on this earth with no memory of who you are, you are already snatched and put here, out there. It's not futuristic. It's already been done to you. You can't be caught by a demon when you get out of your body if you're already here on earth and you don't remember anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Scott, can I ask this question from Slim Frank? Said About a year ago, while I was sleeping, I went into a dream where I was leaving my body by some outside force. It startled me in my dream, and I awoke, and I, as I awoke, I felt myself fall back to the bed about one foot. Was I, ha was I having an out-of-body experience, and if it happens again, should I not be startled and go on the journey? Don't be afraid. Go on the journey. You cannot be harmed. Here's the reason. The atma, which is spherical, is not made of destructible matter. A hydrogen bomb could be set off underneath an atma, and it would sit there, would do nothing to it. People, when they think they're a body, are afraid of losing a body. It has nothing to do with the being running that body. When they leave the body in the atma form, not astral, in the pure form, they're not vulnerable to be harmed but they've been brainwashed to believe that they are, so they will be grounded and stuck on this earth until they grow old and die. And then the consciousness they leave the earth with is one of fear and terror of the unknown, and it will propel them to come right back here and incarnate again with no memory. On automatic, you don't even need guard towers. People just keep coming back here. That cycle, that kind of thing, I'm not trying to say this to scare people, I'm saying that that kind of an entire illusion Maya is being undone out in the creation and it's passing through this earth and it's only moving one direction. So people might as well start getting ready and waking up because it's going to happen anyway, whether they like it or not. Something is underway now that cannot be reversed. It's not made by extraterrestrial tyrants or good people. It comes from above the void. Something has changed there that's changing here. The only way people will become consciously aware of this and have confidence with it and stop being afraid of the future is when they wake up and experience this for themselves. So my work is based on direct experience, not my direct experience. Other people having direct experience like I had, which makes sense. Otherwise, I'm just talking data and entertainment. That's not why I'm here at all. I'm not motivated by power and money and fame and fortune on this earth. Once you get into the other worlds and get in the higher worlds, those things don't motivate you anymore. Things more grand and wonderful to co-create with the source and other beings out there motivate you, changes you. You become, you become who you are. Yeah. Scott, one more question. How is it going to look like when we realize that this body is nothing? Our real being is like at my I didn't life. say it was nothing. It's as real as anything when it's living its life in a particular dimension, made of matter from that plane. When this body ceases functioning, it dissolves back into the matter of that plane. The being is just floating there going, oh, I'm dead. Oh, wait a minute. I'm talking to myself. Oh, the body's dead. Oh, I, oh, wow. That's what happens when most people die. Yeah, yeah, and they just get shocked into the realization. Not only are they not dead, but then they don't know what to go do with themselves either. 
and that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Because in this case, like when people who are awakened, so they know the true self is Atma, right? So the person who's who who is ill or sick on on this planet, so they just leave body, say, okay, so I don't have nothing to worry about. Well, except for one thing. There's, and I'll be right back. But there's one thing that people leave this life, and only one thing they take with them: their okay. state of consciousness, what they are aware of. One. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're back. Nature calls before we go on a journey like this. Okay. Before I start into any of these things, since these are designed for the public, for people that are finding out about my work, maybe trying to understand it, getting some benefit, wondering about a lot of things, sensing they're on the right path for themselves, through the hue, through the new ray operating in the hue, the omnipresent first sound behind all creation that underlies all of it, supports all of it. We as beings are comprised of that energy and it comes from the very source of things far mm -hmm. above the void known to people on earth in any religion. And we originally, all of us who are on earth today, came from there long ago before the lower dimensions of time and space were constructed, we were there as the source, like pure teardrops of individual beings amongst a mighty ocean of the same energy. And then the lower dimensions were created in time and space for experience, for beings to have experience running forms that were developed like human and others, so that they could report back to that source with insights they've gained about how to create it better. The experiment of evil was put in place by all of us a long time ago, not as human beings on earth, but as the Atma. And we also responsible for changing it, not just people on earth, but the whole thing and the beings that live in the upper worlds and all the beings between are responsible for changing it. Bitching about evil will not change it. Creating it with the right use of the imaginative faculty, collectively, will. That's what's underway now. Vast hosts of beings not from Earth and not on Earth are moving in this direction now. Sooner or later, all the people on Earth are going to be in that direction, too. When their vibration rises enough, they're going to remember. Ever so much they've been made to forget for so long. It isn't like people think on Earth. It just isn't. It's way beyond that. Did that answer the question? Yes. I often talk about from the day I started to come out publicly on this planet, took an entire lifetime of training and experience, mostly not on this world. The kinds of tests I went through, I wouldn't provide or give to any other living creature for all the money in the universe. Because most people would not survive it. I did barely, having come to this earth to help change this world more than 60 years ago. And a mission that was intercepted, which is now underway, 60 years later. It's okay. Timing is everything. The timing is right on this planet now for all world leaders to wake up enough 
to do what they originally agreed to do under the National Security Act when they classified systems here. And that is to tell the people the truth, the entire truth. When they felt no one would riot in the streets, people on earth are ready for that. Holding it back, waiting longer to disclose is causing ripples in space time that are very destructive, even to the people that control things here. They cannot keep that up. Something's underway now that will make it inevitable that disclosure takes place here in no uncertain terms. And it isn't about destruction or harming or killing anyone. It's about setting people free from subconscious manipulation that was done by the misuse of extraterrestrial science by tyrants not from Earth to leaders on this planet. And it didn't start yesterday. This is old stuff. It goes back to the before the end of a great war in our galaxy that ended half a million years ago. There hasn't been one since. But there's been a kind of a cold war and it's been policed from off planet. Earth and the solar system we live in are quarantined. What does that mean? It means that huge hosts of beings that travel between star systems, even other galaxies, and between dimensions higher than here have agreed to quarantine it because people from Earth are extremely dangerous and destructive and psychotic. Not because they mean to be, because of some consciously programs are making that way. And that means that they are thinking about going out into the stars on reverse engineered anti-gravity ships or whatever with weapons of destruction, nuclear weapons, and they're gonna go out among the stars and plant the flags of the Earth on other people's worlds. It's not ever going to happen, ever. Never, because space is already occupied by more advanced races. That's backward thinking. People on Earth need to step up and be responsibly accepted to play with them. And then we'll have access to all their technology, no more disease, all that stuff. But not until we grow up enough here. Not until leaders here stop playing all the little games they have for greed and power and money, which they can't help really, by the way. Once that changes, there will be a complete disclosure on this planet announced publicly. That's coming. The alternative is the destruction and annihilation of this planet. Just that simple. Scott, we, we have been hearing about this, this closure is coming for a long time. People start wondering when yeah, exactly. Say a lot of a lot of people have said a lot of things and predicted dates and times that never, ever come true. Because it's not about psychic prediction, which is unreliable. Psychic energies are woven with the positive and negative stream, intertwined. One day they're reliable, the next day they're not. Because it works with the energies that run through the four lower planes, and they're not reliable. They don't come from the source directly. They split off it below the void into a dual current system. For people to become whole again as a being, and be able to see in a whole way in the multidimensional creation, and to look from above their body, from the being they are out in the universe and know things, plug into that first sound, that omnipresent field of energy that underlies everything in all the dimensions, running through all of it. You can plug right into that and move anywhere on it and know things within it. You can't get answers, you ask, from a physical brain on Earth. It's like saying, what did I do when I was in Lemuria? What did I do when I was on another planet? What lifetimes did I live? This brain doesn't know that. It grew up on with this body on this Earth. It has no memory of such things. When a being on Earth becomes aware they think they've lived in another life, or they realize they're out of their body at night flying somewhere, it's not on this dimension. They come back with that memory. When beings do that, they're beginning to realize there's some part of them that isn't the physical body that can see and do this stuff. It's just not conscious yet. It's just wavering on the edge of consciousness. 
So we want to do is get people over the edge of consciousness and into the actual co-creative imaginative use. That means when you create something or imagine something, you don't do it from the brain ever. This is what people think on earth because they've been deliberately misled. You don't imagine anything from the brain. There's no motion picture projector and movie screen inside the brain to see stuff. It's not there. The brain is not designed to do that. The being that's running the brain in this body, that isn't this body, that is spherical, can do that. Does that. Has that capability. So you see, we want to get people accustomed to comfortably, safely leaving their body while they're alive. They'll know where they're going and what they're going to do when this body ceases, and they won't be in fear about it anymore. Changes everything. Okay, so let's do a little bit of this practice of this out-of-body stuff. And go on a little journey. I ask everybody to be comfortable to sit in a chair or lie on a couch, lay down on the bed, on the carpet, wherever they are. Take several deep breaths and really try to relax. I have to do exactly what I share for other people to do. I simply have been doing it for so long. You know, while I'm talking to you with my eyes open, my body is in the trance state called sleep. It has been for some time. I've learned how to run it, have it in a trance state, and still be able to look and talk with people on the radio show. Sometimes I'll close my eyes, but I'm really seeing what I'm sharing with you and being somewhere else. The body's an automatic. What we do is we begin to raise the vibration of people listening to this radio show. We call it a show, but it isn't really for entertainment purposes. And the vibration begins to go up because it's a co-creative channel that I consciously create with others, not from earth, from higher realities, even from the source itself. So that means I'm a co-creative channel with the source, the supreme being, which isn't really a being on a throne somewhere. I got that all wrong on earth too. And you don't worship it. You respect it and you respect all life. This is really what divine love is. When you take a breath and breathe out, imagine all the negative things you've ever thought of. Fear of the future, fear of your age, whether you're with the right person, did you marry the right person, do you have the right kids, this and that. When will you die? What religion is right? Why are governments lying to everybody? All these kinds of things. For now, put them aside. Imagine them going into little computer cards and discs, sitting on the carpet, on the couch, on the floor. All negative emotional drives, all negative imagination, putting it aside just for now. You're going to leave it aside with the physical body that is going to be safely put into the trance state called sleep. You, the being, are not going into the trance state called sleep. The difference between what you do when you put that body to bed at night, by identifying with the body, you go unconscious with it. Doesn't mean you don't go out of your body and have adventures. It means you're not trained from birth to bring it back. So you don't. Higher faculties require conscious use of them, not unconscious use of them. Then I'll begin these tones, which I bring out in the hue. When I'm doing it, there's a new ray, a new kind of an energy pattern in this omnipresent first sound behind all creation that only moves in a unique new one way. It isn't dual. It doesn't go back and forth. It's not up and down. It's not positive and negative, but it has command over all the lower dimensions and everything in it, positive and negative. And it's moving in a direction to retire what we call the experiment of evil. You can't throw stones at anybody else for that experiment because we were all involved and responsible for it. Billions of years ago that you don't remember, you couldn't remember on earth. 
as a human being on earth, you can't. As an atma, awake and aware, you can. Okay. The tones when I send them out are telepathically sent out. It's not psychic. I'm not putting down psychics or anything like that. But it, it is unreliable energy. It's positive one time, it's negative the next. It's right one time, it's wrong the next. It's just not, you've got to get behind and above that energy to see and know real hidden truth and wake it up. So the new ray blended into the hue, which was take place just about seven and a half years ago, Earth time, didn't even exist before. In the entire multidimensional creation, it is something new. It is not designed to destroy the lower dimensions, which has been done before a number of times. They've been rebuilt. People were thrown back in them, and the experiment of evil begun again. It's a failed experiment. It's never worked. It never will work. It's beginning to be retired like the dinosaur, because something far superior that actually works properly to motivate people to co-create with the source new uplifting ways of doing things for the benefit of all life. This is the true purpose of a human being. That is our real destiny. There's nothing to do with staying on earth in one body forever. It never has been about that. Okay. When I send this out, I will raise it in tone because what I'm doing is connecting with the physical universe, the astral, causal, mental, etheric, the void, the atma plane above the void and the planes above that all the way and into the center of the source itself. Kind of like an open doorway, doorways. And the beings can go on a little journey and begin to recall more of who they are that's living beyond this earth in body forms in the astral, causal, mental, etheric, and is the atma that's running those bodies, the spherical one that's running those bodies. We're multidimensional beings. The Atma doesn't live in space and time, never has. But it can run body forms that live in space and time. I will begin these tones now. One of the things this does is shut down the subconscious negative programs for now. So when you're out on this journey, you can see and know and understand more without the effect of negative subconscious fear terrorizing drives. Okay. I'll begin. You
It's easy to be aware of being out of the physical body. It doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be aware of the physical body at the same time because you're running it at a distance. There's a energy tether, you might say, from the white core of your spherical being to the pineal gland, the center of the brain of a physical human body on earth. Running the brain and running the body at a distance. It is not an astral cord. It isn't breakable. It isn't made of positive and negative matter of the lower worlds and cannot be penetrated by any negative thing, negative beings in or outer bodies or misuse of technology. When you imagine yourself standing by a waterfall in the mountains, let's say you're I don't know, in your backyard or in your car and you stop for lunch and you just imagine being in a beautiful place, kind of idly, without really being that conscious you're doing it, called daydreaming. The being that is seeing that is not seeing that from the human brain. Unconsciously, the being that is running that body is seeing it somewhere in creation. And they're conscious of the fact they're doing it and they're just calling it daydreaming. In reality, the being is actually seeing what they're imagining somewhere. When people go out of their bodies at night, everybody on this planet, as twisted as many of them are, know how to put the body to sleep at night like a pro. But they don't understand what it is they're doing. The body doesn't just go to sleep because you lay it down. It goes into the trance state and is put on automatic so you can get out and bring higher energy back to it. And you're supposed to bring awareness of what you were doing back to it when you wake it up in the morning from the trance state called sleep. The difference of what we're doing here and that and going to bed at night is that you're remaining conscious while we go on this journey that I'm guiding encouraging people to use their creative imagination to see what it is I'm describing for themselves because we're really doing it. You're by a waterfall. You can feel the mist of the water lightly kiss your face. Your bare feet are in brown soil and you're rubbing your toes in it and it feels good. Whatever this soil is, it's not soil like you feel on earth. There's no negative in it. It's vibrating and it's glowing. When you look out in the distance from this waterfall, and you look up, you see that you're halfway up a mountainside, it's snow covered, glacier covered, and there's a waterfall cascading a third of the way down from the top, out of a cavern opening and dropping thousands of feet down a sure rock wall cliff to the base of blue green forest trees where it disappears and becomes a river behind a gigantic, clear, domed city. The dome covers three golden-sided pyramids with quartz crowns. When you look out towards downward from the mountain, from this waterfall, you see that there becomes very tall violet grasses, green and blue grasses, and eventually you can see way down that it becomes tropical way out by a beach that you can see luminous in the distance many miles away that is green. When you smell the air in this physical energy form you have manifested here, it's like the body you have on earth, but it's not made of physical matter. It's not astral. If you look above the body standing by the waterfall, you'll see a sphere of energy running it. That's you, the real you. The body is a construct of energy mocked up so you can experience this particular planet Earth. It's Earth, but not the one you're familiar with. 
It's in a third higher parallel dimension above where you are normally used to seeing this world. Is it is what is called a higher molecular time rate. It is in a higher parallel dimension. The poles of this planet never flipped like they do in the world you're familiar with, or did, cyclically every 100,000 years, destroying all life, and had to be recolonized. This world, in a higher vibratory frequency, has never had poles flip, it's never had negativity on it, and it's been a protected place for eons. Now here you are hovering above the body you have on earth, sitting in a chair, lying down on a couch, and you're up by the ceiling, just as easy as you could imagine a hummingbird or this waterfall, you can see that you're looking down on the body, looking down at the top of your head, which is in the trance state called sleep. And you're looking down on it with a kindness. When you look up through the ceiling from the white core of your being, you find that you're hovering 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere, looking out over your city or countryside. When you look down, you see that there is a sphere identical to you, because it is you, hovering above that body near the ceiling on Earth. When you look up, you see up stars in space, even through daylight. And you find yourself suddenly hovering above the planet in the vacuum of space. You don't need to breathe there. You don't feel cold or heat. Radiation won't bother you. And you're floating there with other beings who have been waiting for you, who are kind. You can tell that their atmosphere is just like you. One's a particularly bright one, and that's Ambassador Torellian from the Ceres. Someone who voluntarily goes with us on these journeys to lend a hand. The Say Rays were human billions of years ago. And a billion years ago, they immortalized their physical bodies. That does not mean they made their bodies live forever at 36 years old. It means they dematerialized their bodies and drew them and stored them in an atom of their atma, one of the teardrops out in one of the layers. And when they want, they can manifest a full physical body, carry out a mission, and then undo it and take off without being limited by time and space, magnetic fields, light, the speed of light, black holes, or any of it. Float in space for a few moments with everyone. You're going to find that Torelli and myself, Perry, and others are there, and others are starting to join us. When you first experience them, wherever you are on Earth, you'll find that you feel uplifted, and they are kind beings, and you just know it. I will be right back. Torellian is hovering in space. At first, if you look around, it looks like the black void of space, like you've all seen from photographs taken or cameras taken from the shuttle spacecraft or from the Hubble telescope. But that's only because people on Earth, the eyes they have, are limited to seeing a very small spectrum of light. And so space looks dark to them. But it isn't. It's really quite bright white light with a golden tinge running through everything. On Earth, scientists call this dark matter, but they know it's not really dark. And they know it fills the void of space between all things, between galaxies, between suns, between planets. It's fill, it fills the entire multidimensional universe. And it is a conscious energy. It's an omnipresent field of force that is not made of positive and negative streams of energy. And we are made of exactly the same energy, the white core of our being, 
And that same energy exists in the source people call, what people from other worlds call prime creator. And that is considerably beyond what people on earth know as the source behind all life. When you look from the Atma, the real you floating here, your body's safe on earth in the trance state called sleep, it's protected by a certain energy field and the new ray in the hue that I went saying all these different tones. It's completely safe. Same way it is when you go to bed at night, except you're up in space now, hovering as a being. Torellian looks to be a bit brighter, a little larger than most of us because he's far more ancient in a way. But he doesn't put himself above us. He doesn't require, nor would he permit worship of any kind. He's a friend, not from Earth. The DNA that makes up our double strand on Earth comes from them originally, long, long, long ago in galactic history, in the physical universe. The beings called the Say Rays were responsible way back when to raise genetic forms like spiritual scientists, like our human beings on Earth and others that have more strands of DNA, brought them up into spacefaring capability and then they disappeared, departed the scene to see what people would do with it, what the Atmos would do with it when they started running these body forms that had the ability at one time through the nervous system, the way the brain was running at 100% instead of 6 to 10% we're told we use on Earth, which is silly. It just means people are unconscious about using the rest of it. It's all there. It's all developed. So such beings could use their higher faculties as an atma through those bodies and have that awareness on Earth, in the astral plane, or anywhere else they're living a life. The say rays who basically populated life in physical forms, in the physical and astral worlds, that's 144 dimensions plus another 144. And they seeded life in all of it and then vanished for a very long time. Not long ago, they decided to return. And one of the things they went through was a consciousness change themselves which motivated them to get back involved with helping the younger races go into the right direction and not destroy each other or themselves in some huge Armageddon nonsense. There are others who are here appearing in three concentric circles, floating in space around Torellian, who's in the center and I'm beside him, not because he's more important than us, but because it keeps us focused on going on a journey that will be constructive. The universe is a big place and people can wander off and get scattered in any of it and accomplish nothing. We're going on a journey for a specific purpose. And it's only constructive. There's a row of 100 beings surrounding us in a circle. These are members of what's called the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds in our Milky Way galaxy. There is a row of beings behind them, over a thousand. They are from a world called Zintranaman One. And they have human bodies 10 feet tall, longer necks, little longer fingers, beautiful men and women, and they have been able to run physical bodies as the Atma in our physical universe. And some of them have bodies three and a half million years old. It just means they can run bodies, but they're not stuck in them. And they're here to experience where we're going and see what we do from Earth in creating constructive new ways of doing things. And they will share that with their people. They're telepathic. Torellian is. The Galactic Alliance members are, many of them human, on their bodies and their worlds or on their ships. And they are going with us on this journey for the same benefit, to share the experience directly with millions, even billions of others who will get it telepathically as if they were here. 
This is one of the ways they're speeding up this. Well, for Earth people, we could call it disclosure, but it's far, far more than that. There is another circle of beings hovering in a little circle, a little narrower, up above us, around Torellian. They're from a planet called Das Ventalis I. It is in a world system five galaxies away from Earth. It is not Andromeda, it's not the Milky Way, it's not the next one or the next one, but it is the next one out from us in distance. And they are of the same race, basically, as the Xeantronomus people, or is from Xeantronomus 1. They came to this galaxy long ago and helped with the uplifting evolution of species and many races in this world, this world systems in the Milky Way. These two races, the Galactic Alliance, which runs practically half of the Milky Way galaxy, few tyrant worlds are policed, and then there, the other half, a little larger than that, which is already under the jurisdiction of the Zentranamon One. There's no negative evil in any of this. And they've joined forces recently. It basically puts on notice any tyrant race is still traveling the stars. Their days are numbered. It means they're going, whatever drives them subconsciously to behave in destructive and sinister and nasty ways is being undone. And if you don't know this, if you don't find this out above the earth world, you'll never know it. On earth, every negative thought and imagination and thing that's ever been done to anyone in its history still exists in the atmosphere of the planet, bouncing off the ionosphere. Radio waves can be sent around the curvature of the Earth because they bounce off the ionosphere. Every deed done on this planet is still there in the atmosphere for people to pick up on if they're vulnerable. Even act out scenes that happened that were destructive a million years ago. This is unfortunate, but that too is beginning to change. When you're above your body in this way, your abilities go up exponentially, expand greatly. To be able to float in space, see the white light that runs through everything, what people at the Large Hagron Collider in CERN, Switzerland call the God particle because it doesn't behave according to the laws of physics as they understand it. And it isn't really nuclear, but it is behind everything. So you get an idea of what it is we're exploring. More than an idea, an experience of remembering, recall, because all of you once knew this stuff really well, long, long time ago. It isn't about evolving to be telepathic and recovering such high faculties and awareness in the future. It's about recovering what was you were made to forget without your consent first. Then from there, it can evolve into greater states. When you look down on the Earth from space, you see the polar ice caps of the planet, just as if you were the space shuttle or Hubble telescope looking at Earth. Everybody's seen photographs of that. Green water, land, from up here, you don't see any fences between countries. You don't even see cities. Can't even see the people. Just one planet. Oceans, land, and one atmosphere. And a moon off to the left there with craters, full of craters, no atmosphere. The one you're familiar with seeing in the night sky. Does not turn on its axis. It always revolves around the Earth, facing the same way. So if you want to hide something from people on Earth, put it on the back side of the moon where astronomical telescopes, optical telescopes, radio telescopes cannot see it or detect it. Clever. And you're going to look down on the Earth and this moon and you see the sun way off in the distance we call Sol. 
or sol. And then you're going to see a heat wave go across it in space. And it becomes Earth and the moon in the same place, but a very different Earth and moon. All that's happened here is Torellian, myself, and a few others have raised the vibration so that you can see this world that exists in a different time space, different molecular time rate than the one you're familiar with. And you can see that there is one huge continent extending from the left hemisphere to the right on this world, extends somewhat up in the polar north region, not polar, but above the equator, same down below. And down here is a half moon bay, half moon bay shaped emerald green beach. You can see this from space. When you look over to the where the moon was, it is oxygen and atmosphere and lakes and land and rivers. It's blue and it's beautiful and there's clouds and it's turning on its axis as it moves around our planet. This is in a higher molecular time rate, what is called a higher frequency or parallel dimension within the physical universe. This world and this moon, which has five dome cities on its surface, big giant dome cities, not cluttered, mostly nature. There's one on the backside you can't see. Has been operated by or occupied by both Galactic Alliance members, their adept master teachers come from all over different dimensions, beings from other worlds that have most advanced science unimaginable on Earth that live in the physical universe. A planet called Oceana, on the other side of the Milky Way, one of the other spiral arms, water covered. One of the beings that's hovering here around Torellian is named Opelum. He is a master teacher. He's had this physical body that looks middle-aged, healthy, trim, pale blue skin, long black hair, for a very, very, very long time, unaged. You can see his body form appear in space, even though behind it is a sphere uh, like us, an Atma, running it. There's another being here named Master Ramu, who carries a quartz crystal staff, about six feet tall, with a cross with a circle with a hole in it, like the Egyptian onk for eternal life. And it is a device. And he is one of the more ancient teachers. He did not originate on Earth. He was stationed on Earth over 100,000 years ago, prior to the last polar flip that destroyed the lands, rose new ones up from the sea, and created the continents we live on today. And that is a cycle that's been going on for some time, every 100,000 years. The Seres and other beings more evolved than them, called the silent mentors, the mechanics of the universe, recently permanently stopped the polar flips of planet Earth for the benefit of all life, so that people on Earth could finally evolve for hundreds of millions of years, like other worlds that don't have polar flips. Earth is very unique and that it did this phenomena. That event is caused whenever this world in the solar system moves around the galaxy once. Something happens, it passes through an area of space that flipped over the poles of this planet. It's a violent affair. This Lemuria you're seeing on Earth down here never had polar flips. There's no pollutants in the atmosphere and the water on the land. We're going down to that world. We've been here before, but it bears going to another journey to it to experience maybe more detail in a different way. You can see Torelli moving, and as we're all Atmos floating, we're moving with him, and we're moving down from outer space into the upper atmosphere of this planet, this Earth. And as we move through the clear, breathtaking white clouds with a subtle violet tinge to them, you come out in a blue atmosphere overlooking the southern 
point of this continent that extends across from hemisphere to hemisphere on this sphere. No polar ice caps. Oceans all around it. And there's another continent on the back side of the planet. You can see right through it as an atma. It's still called Atlantis to this day, or what would be termed Atlantis in English. But it has nothing to do with either one of those that have existed 100,000 years ago in the parallel dimension lower than here on the Earth you're familiar with. And we're going to go flying down towards that ocean area. Here's this continent up here, poles, half moon bay shaped, emerald green beach. And as you come close to it, like a mile long, you can see a beautiful blue green curling wave crashing on this emerald green sand that has a glow about six inches above it. And when you get down and look at the little kernels that make up the sand, they're little polished emeralds, transparent, deep green. And the light is just radiating from them. And suddenly you feel bare feet extending from the atma, just feet, your feet. And they sink down into this emerald green sand along the shore. All of you on this journey, lining up down the beach from all the worlds who are joining us are feeling the same experience. This energy in this sand is very highly charged. It has to do with memory. It has to do with charging up certain things in the atma, encouraging certain things to be turned on in the different layers that make up the sphere of each being to be able to see and know things they once knew. You feel the sand under your toes is cool, but there's a warm energy running up your legs. And you see that it goes right up into the white core of your being and out into the green layer. Lots of teardrop shapes around that layer. They're self-luminous and they contain information in each of them. And it kind of lights some of those up. Turns them on. Then your feet vanish. And all of us are going to hover above the sand, and Torellian is going to move above the tall jungle trees with giant ferns lining each side of a brown moss covered path that leads off into the distance about a mile, and way off in the distance. Just past the jungle trees, you see a clearing, a circular clearing. There's a white marble floor in the circle, at the end of this brown path. And then tall, four-foot-high lavender grass, grass surrounding that, like a hundred acres, gently moving in a soft breeze. And we're going to move over the top of this brown path as beings, as spheres of light until we approach the center of this white marble floor. And in the center of that is a four foot by four foot, maybe by foot and a half high, blue stone with gold lace through it polished. And standing on it is a quartz crystal starved carved statue, 10 feet high of a beautiful woman. She has her arms out to the side like this. And there's a green energy glowing around her hands. And when you look at that green energy and you look back to the beach, you see that it's lighting up the sand that you just sunk your feet into. When you look at this statue of this beautiful woman who appears to be 36, you can see her hair, even though it's carved quartz and flawless. It's a device, and you could reach up and touch the hair, and it's, it appears to be like silver metal, shiny silver. You think it's like metal, but then you touch it, and it's soft. Her eyes are violet, lovely, glowing eyes, pointed ears like an elf. And she has longer fingers than an earth human, longer arms, but perfectly proportioned. Remember, this is a 10 foot tall woman, not from Earth. And she has two big giant wings out of crystal extended and open up behind her back. 
She does not represent an angelic order as people understand them on earth. The wings represent the ability of the Atma to fly free of a body like a bird that has wings. She has a long, elegant dress on and bare feet. Bare arms, right to here. And she is constantly looking out at that green beach. When you look inside this crystal transparent structure, you see her face. She has a gold band around her forehead and a teardrop shape, emerald cut, it's called emerald crystal. Flat surface and facets around it, set in this gold band. And in it, you can see planets in other spaces and realities. You can look right through it. It's like a doorway. But more than that, you see the face of this actual woman just inside this crystal structure looking at you. Smiling, kindly. We're gonna move right through that crystal on her forehead and inside this device, this doorway. When you're inside it, you're in a huge stadium-sized green field of energy. And here's this actual woman from Zian Ternamos, from Zian Ternam on one on the other side of the Milky Way, hovering in the atmosphere, just looking at us, welcoming us. This was a gift from those people to this earth world in this parallel dimension because it is a gift that they are very highly adept at on this planet dealing with the immortalization of bodies. Their bodies don't grow old. They don't think they're in bodies. They're not stuck in bodies. They don't have disease. They don't have any of that stuff. That's old science for them. And they bring the gift of how to comprehend such things to this device. And it's given as a gift to this parallel dimension Earth, which, which is this continent, this big one's called Lemuria or Mu to this day. But it's not one that ever sank like the one did on Earth. Bear that in mind. And off in the distance, further up towards the mountainside, beyond the white marble floor and the statue of this woman, you can see from this blue atmosphere, right through the transparent surface of this crystal, a tall mountain peak and a large domed city centered at the base of the floor of this mountain, up the plateau, surrounded by blue green forest trees. And up the mountainside, two-thirds of the way towards the summit, a large cavern opening, like a half-moon opening, and a huge blue-green waterfall cascading down thousands of feet. And it comes down behind the dome, disappears in the forest trees, and runs down eventually to become a river that circles just outside of the violet glass by the angel's uh, glass, violet grass near this crystal angel statue. You can see a river down there, wide and green, slowing fully, slowly. And there are tall, look like very tall, weeping willow trees. The little blue-green leaves come down to the ground. And they're kind of glowing. They're luminous. When you look down at the dome city, which you're hovering above right now, instantly, you can see there are three gigantic, four-sided, gold-sided, Pyramids in a triangular position with quartz crowns, perfectly clear. And a long oval ivory colored building like Moonstone centered at their base between them. There are beings you can see walking down white marble paths in a beautifully landscaped countryside, a big lake in front of these pyramids and a half sphere background of mountains and little rivers and waterfalls which are put inside the dome for the aesthetic, aesthetic beauty and enjoyment of the people who come here. The people who come here come here from all over the galaxy, particularly master teachers come here. And they bring students here sometimes out of their body at night to teach and to help them understand how to remember much they've been made to forget. They now have their hands untied in recent years to be able to help people much more quickly recover than they could in any time in history. This has to do with the new ray that was blended into the omnipresent first sound, the hue. When people hue, 
It's a way that they've been made to forget, but it allows them to connect telepathically to the source from whence they come directly. And all the beings who are kind and wondrous who do this to you and know of it, hear it when you do it. They become aware of you on earth for the first time. And then they can be of assistance. There is an uplifting warm energy that comes through working with the hue. The new ray provides a certain protection so that even someone on earth can recover what they once knew in a process that's careful, balanced, and keeps your life in a balanced way while it's going on. In front of the dome, there are three cobalt blue disc shaped landing pads that face out down the mountainside all the way down to the tall lavender grass surrounding the angel statue and then all the way down to the jungle area, all the way to the emerald green beach, still glowing. And you can see all this. You smell the air and you feel like you're breathing. It's going through your entire spherical being and then you breathe out that white core is connecting to the white energy that supplies and is in the atmosphere and is in between planets and space. You're connecting with it. You can hear the high sound of a flute and down below a lower frequency sounds like millions of bees gently humming. And the sound of water running in a brook and the sound of oceans gently crashing on the shore but in a consistent thunderous roll. These are all sounds that come out of the primary first sound. It is sound that creates structure. When it lowers in vibration, it becomes light. But it starts as sound, quite beyond your understanding of sound on Earth. And you can hear it as the Atma, but not as the human being through ears and a human body. You can look down on these landing pads and see three 30 foot wide disc shaped. They have three semi spheric pods underneath and a little cobalt blue glass like dome. And they're not on, they're just landed there. They are smaller craft from the Galactic Alliance. When you look down inside this dome and you look in the countryside by the lake, find yourself suddenly walking in a physical form like you're used to, but perfectly healthy, about 30 years old. And there's Torellian, who happens to be 18 feet tall, because that's the form he had before they dissolved their physical bodies, let's put it that way, long ago. And behind all of these physical forms, smiling, are the spirits of the Atmas running them from above. And you're meeting with some people from this city. One of them is in a physical form. His name is Master Ramu, carrying this crystal staff that you saw up in space. One is Master Opelum, who has pale blue skin, little webs between his fingers. He pointed ears like an elf. Long, beautiful black hair. Elegantly handsome. Trim, ageless. And he is like one of the master teachers in that ivory dome building between the pyramids off in the distance. And they're just there to greet you. They just place their hand over their chest and do that. And you can hear them talk to you, both of them, without moving their lips. And they will say something to each one of you on this journey. If you look around you now, you'll see a hundred other people in a circle around them and a thousand behind them and another circle up above. And they are aware of all of them. These are people who have come with us on this journey to see how we experience it because the frank truth of it is they're still amazed that people as closed down on earth as they've been can actually come to such an elevated place. And this is a mystery for the more evolved races out there. It tells them that a lot of the beings that are on Earth right now that don't remember who they are have very great co-creative potential to help change things. But they need to be recovered first. 
So this is the interest that we hold for people from other worlds now. An interest, by the way, that recently began is fairly new for them. In the past, they didn't want to get involved with bunches of people like on Earth or other planets until they realize that people on Earth do not have free will like they think they do. How can you have free will if you don't remember who you are, any of your higher faculties, or all the lives you've lived anywhere in the whole multidimensional creation? Well, you can't. So their interest now in assisting us is to have us recover true free will. That's number one. When you smell the air here, you smell something like a higher version of gardenia and lilac. Then you start seeing these beautiful kind of semi-glowing trees with big spoon-shaped blue leaves. And there are birds perched in those trees that have long V-shaped split tails, two sets of wings like a hummingbird with two sets. They look like a blue jay with big beautiful blue eyes, a little more bulbous that wrap partly around their heads. And they are beautiful blue pools of wisdom. When you look above these birds, there's this spherical atma hovering above them. These birds are telepathic. Their nervous system is much higher than birds on Earth. And beings have chosen to run these bird bodies to experience what it's like to be the consciousness of this bird, which isn't like birds on Earth. They have photographic memories. They have vocal cords. They can talk with you, and they sing beautifully. And some of them are beginning to sing in beautiful harmony up in the trees. It brings tears to my eyes. And I don't even have eyes there. And then they come up and hover in front of each single person here. And you can swear they're smiling at you. And they hear one thing coming from all of them. Welcome. And they fly away and go about their business. They have beautiful rainbow-colored bodies, the feathers blended subtly so it looks like one big beautiful rainbow of color. They're gorgeous. Then you find yourself standing in front of that angel statue, the woman again, on the white marble floor. And in the distance you can see the dome city at the base of the mountain where you were just inside it. When you look back, down the brown path of moss. You can see the glowing emerald green beach. And you find that you have feet, bare feet again, sinking down a foot inside it. And it's the most wondrous feeling of familiarity. Like you have always known this, but were made to forget it. And then this goes up into the area of your being through the white core. And it begins to light up that green layer amongst all the layers in your being. And then you find yourself hovering in space above this world with the moon that has dome cities on it. It's alive and green and water. Same earth, same moon, but different molecular time rate. And you see a heat wave pass across it like a heat in the desert. And it becomes the earth you're used to, the polar ice caps, the barren moon that doesn't turn on its axis. And you can see in the void of space all around you, even in our reality, this white light with a gold tinge running through everything, top to bottom, everywhere, through everything, between stars, between planets, between galaxies. All that black void really isn't black at all. It is a living conscious energy. And it runs through the entire multidimensional creation. And we are comprised of it and we co-create with it. When you send imagination into it, it co-creates with you, good or bad. The problem is people on earth have been manipulated to think in both ways simultaneously and it grounds them to the earth. There's only one correct way to use the creative imagination which is not made up in the brain and is not imagined from the brain or the human being, but from the being, the soul, the atma running that body the real you. And it, the correct use of the imagination is to create deliberately of conscious free will, 
only that which will be of uplifting benefit to all life, not just life on earth, all of it. And you find yourself hovering in the atmosphere above where you live. It could be day or night, it doesn't matter. And you'll see a number of beings hovering around you, kind beings, men and women, but not from earth. And then they smile at you and tell you they will work with you when you're out of your body at night, if you ask them to, to help you recover what you were made to forget. And then you see yourself hovering above your body, wherever you are on earth, and you send this entire experience down into the pineal gland in the center of your brain and light it up, light up some more of those brain cells in there and store this experience in the nervous system of the human body on earth. And then let the green energy come through you and go out into the world. When you're ready, open your eyes. Creation is amazing, Scott. It's unbelievable. There, is, there, there are worlds, you know, parallel to our planet, our world. Worlds without end. On many dimensional levels. The more advanced space-faring races people on Earth are do not yet know exist because of a classified system that's so highly classified they don't want anybody to know about extraterrestrials, but they're beginning to want to. Let's put it that way. Most of those, well, most of those beings out there, many of them human, some of them have four-stranded DNA instead of two, like people on Earth do, as they think is normal, and even that isn't. It's a long history they've been made to forget, and it's mostly a history beyond the history of what they know of on Earth and out in the galaxies as well. And they all had a part in it, they just don't remember. Something happened to the races out among the stars and other realities fairly recently that change the way that they think or make decisions about whether they will get involved or intervene in the affairs of this planet. Not in ways like tyrants would to dominate and control people and run governments, no. But in ways that will assist, they will assist the people on earth on any level to recover who they are. That's how you change a planet. You know, fight your, with your fists, the good guys against the Illuminati and the bad boys and the, the elite cabal and all that. You know, that doesn't work. It has to happen on a planetary scale. This planet's going to take its place out in the universe among the stars and play among the stars, just in the physical universe. It has to be run by one benevolent government system. No more lies, no more classified. And then all that technology and beings and assistants and experts in every field can come here and raise the whole place up in a whole different way. And then people can play among the stars when they can be trusted to play among the stars and not be neurotic and psychotic and fear-ridden and terrorized and destructive, misdirected in their thinking. This is important. That's why Earth is quarantined. It's not meant to stay that way. The solar system we live in is quarantined, and it's not meant to stay that way. But it will until we're safe enough people to join other races among the stars. It's just that simple. Okay, I want to wish everybody well and pleasant dreams. And because Perry's kind enough to, re, to I'll send this recording, she'll put it up on her YouTube channel. No advertisements on it, or hopefully none. We don't want that. Um, because it interrupts the flow of people trying to get benefit from it. So we'll get that up there, and then all of you can play it back at another time. When you're sure you won't be disrupted or disturbed, take an hour, get some headphones, whatever you got to do and go on the journey again and listen to all the detail of what we went through. Imagine it and see it and endeavor to bring it back to your body. 
Because even if you call it a meditation or a contemplation, you're sitting on a pillow in the middle of the day, you're still going to be having that body in the trance state called sleep. When you listen to this journey, you'll find it out in your own time anyway. And people will become more and more confident with it as they exercise higher faculties and get this body they grew up with on earth and its brain accustomed to such things. I wish everybody well. Perry, did you want to say anything else or anything from your listening? Uh, yes, not only on this show that people can listen to Scott, they can always go back to our previous journey too, you know, to get more experience, you know, to yeah, practice. They're all, they're all recorded, aren't they? They're all up on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Perry, for hosting this. Thank you to you too, Scott. <sighs> See you in the, well, I don't want to call it the dream state because we know better, but I'll see you on a body tonight. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night.